Hello everyone, Neil Patel here. Thank you for downloading the latest episode of the Indian Startup Show. So today we're talking about how to integrate technology into the humanitarian sector with my special guest, Chamul Tal of Efek Etam. She's the founder and CEO of the Familian Club. Three Million Club is the Amazon.com for life-saving product for the humanitarian sector. Since launching, they have saved over 2,500 children. Amazing stuff. So, so tell us over 17 years working in this sector, and in this show, we talk about where the idea actually came from, how the product works, work in India, plans for the future, and how you can get involved. So please enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello, Shantel. Uh, thanks for coming on the Indian Startup Show today. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, tell me a bit about Three Million Club, please. Sounds interesting. Okay, so the Three Million Club is, uh, put simply, is the Amazon.com of life-saving products. Mm -hmm. It came up because of the huge need of accountability and uh, sustainability for life-saving products in the humanitarian sector. Mm -hmm. Uh, people are just have been frustrated when you buy something or donate something to a charity you really have no idea where your money is going through mm -hmm. uh, and in most cases unfortunately neither does the charity it goes to a bigger pot and then gets distributed on salaries cars rent and some of it does maybe buy a life-saving product mm -hmm. Um, and what we're doing is really we're integrating uh, the efficiency and authenticity of e-commerce mm -hmm. into uh, the relief uh, world. Okay, cool. What, what you buy is uh, what they get. Excellent. So this is, you're in it like a, a proper business, not like an NGO? No, we are actually a complete non-for-profit, mm -hmm. uh, but with a for-profit model. Okay. So we're taking okay. our our investors, uh, um, investors in previous angel investors in startups and technological startups and large businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, they're interested in um, in the hardcore for-profit model, and they believe in the efficiency, and so do. Do I? Mm -hmm. However, our system is a not-for-profit system, so we're not interested in selling the system later. We're interested that people and agencies, especially local agencies as well as international agencies, will then adopt the tracking system to create uh, efficiency and effectiveness uh, over, over donations. And, uh, and where did the idea come from? Can you remember the uh, the discussion? Oh, yes, I remember the discussion, <laughs> um, for sure. Well, the idea came from, initially I was hired by these uh, angels. I have 17, over 17 years of experience in the humanitarian sphere, okay. both in actual, in the field, uh, living and working in post-natural disaster and conflict uh, zones for a few years in every country, and then a lot of research experience uh, in these fields. Um, and what happened is that I developed a prior not-for-profit startup uh, with other uh, for-profit uh, developers. Mm -hmm. I called this uh, their Karma Projects um, because these are not-for-profit startups. Uh, so occasionally I catch a program, a very talented program, and I tell him that he needs to do something uh, for greater good. Um what uh, happened is that I was contacted by these angels because they were disillusioned by the whole, uh, uh, are disillusioned by the whole humanitarian relief, bottomless pit mm. donation uh, sphere and the lack of sustainability that it uh, portrays. Um, and but they had no idea in how to make it more efficient. What they knew is that they want to integrate the tech of the 22nd century into the humanitarian sphere, the efficiency, the lean way the startup models work um, into the humanitarian sphere, but they had no idea on how to do it in the sphere because mm -hmm. they don't, they're not familiar. And that's where I, where I came into the, the picture. Uh, and the actual idea of the e-commerce uh, model and the tracking system came about a year ago. So we are now doing it a year. We're in existence for a little bit over two years. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you've been doing it for two years. Can you share some stats? I mean, how many countries are you in? Uh, you know, how many communities are using this? So uh, right now we have been piloting uh, in Haiti mm -hmm. and uh, post-earthquake Nepal. Um, with what we have been doing, we have saved a little bit over 2,500 uh, children using the same system. So what we really wanted to test 
We, I had no, uh, no, um, there was no questioning is that the product's actually life-saving. But what was the main question of this technology was, will it be utilizable? You know, will the agencies, the local uh, agencies and the local manufacturers, will they like it mm-hmm. and use it? Because, you know, there's so much technology in the third sector that is just left unused. Mm-hmm. Um, also in the first, also in the for-profit sector, as you know. Mm-hmm. So it needs to be use, usable. And what we discovered is that uh, the local agencies really uh, loved using it and support it because they are empowered by it. Mm. Uh, products go directly to them, not to international agencies. And the local manufacturers are uh, empowered for them because they get business flow into their uh, factories mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, directly to them and not via uh, larger international agencies. Mm-hmm. So, how, how, so how do you go about finding the communities then? So it goes, uh, depending on the context, it's uh, very flexible in, uh, in how it works. And we want to keep it this way because our goal is the world, right? Mm-hmm. And we want to help wherever and support and send products, buy and send products uh, wherever they're needed. So the system needs to be flexible enough to operate in different uh, contexts. As you can imagine, working in uh, Bihar in India compared to uh, working in Sudan today would be very, very different story. Mm-hmm. Um, so how we go about it is, A, we are we're heavily now investing in public media so that local NGOs and uh, local manufacturers hear about us and know about this opportunity that they can come and place their products on our in our shop and use the tracking system. Mm-hmm. So basically, if I donate to you and then everything gets tracked, is that correct? Is that, is that how it works? So what- so what you would do is that you don't actually donate to me. No. You go into the shop just like you would when you want to buy flowers for mm-hmm. your girlfriend um, online. Mm-hmm. And you buy the product that you want to buy. Right now in our shop, you'll find one product. But within the next uh, couple of weeks, there will be three. So nice. it's growing fast. Um, you will choose the product you want to, to, to buy the life-saving product, Mm -hmm. let's say it's the therapeutic food now online or later it will be a a water distribution mechanism. So you want to buy the product and then immediately you will, uh, you buy an actual physical product. You don't make a donation. Mm -hmm. You buy a gift. Once you bought that gift, you will get a message. Thank you for your purchase. Just like when you were, how you would get it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Later on, when it was manufactured after days or, um, or a week, depending on the type of product, you get a notification that it was manufactured by a specific factory and you will be notified which factory manufactured your product and that it's en route to a local distributor. Mm-hmm. And you will get to know which is that local distributor. So it's fully transparent on where it's going. You can actually go and visit the local distributor if you want to check the authenticity of the system. Once the product arrived uh, to the local distributor, you'll get you'll see another tracking message uh, in the tracking system saying it arrived and it's starting to be used and starting to save a life. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's the physical reporting, just like you would on DHL, uh, moving until it reaches its destination. Mm -hmm. And then the final uh, report that you will get is what we call an impact reporting. You will get a report, the story of the life life you helped save or saved. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where you get a little bit more pictures, maybe a video, also very lean, um, uh, very lean report that is, uh, that touches more on the quality and not the actual physical location. Mm -hmm. So who's actually built the tracking device then? The tracking device is now, uh, well, we are... We're developing, we're working with a number of developers. So it's a number of developers and a lot of, a number of contractors. Everything we do, because we have this startup model, we outsource. So Mm -hmm. we, a lot of our, all of our operations happen in house, but then when we need additional services like programming, we outsource these uh, depending on, uh, on price offers and, uh, and skill really. So it's a combination of quality and, uh, and, and price to keep it lean. Okay. As a non-profit. Excellent. Uh, any advice on outsourcing uh, for our listeners? Uh, any, any tricks or any tools? On, on outsourcing? Yeah. <laughs> how, how have you found it? Oh, wow. So outsourcing, it's a challenge. I mean, I think that uh, when you're outsourcing things for non-profits, it's, uh, it's tricky because... Uh, 
people are always cautious with you that you don't want to pay. You want everything to be free. And I think that uh, one of the things is that you mention first for very forefront that uh, we don't want freebies because when you do get freebies, they're often very poor. <laughs> so, uh, and the commitment is very low for maintenance, especially with technological um, system development. So don't do freebies. <laughs> that's, that's my main advice for nonprofits that are outsourcing. Um, and I guess also for for-profits that are outsourcing. But uh, for for-profits, the main... Uh, the thing that leads me is um, is uh, is really the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So uh, so try and you know keep keep the good intentions, but make uh, keep it a very clear goal that you do, would apply for a for profit business. Excellent. Uh, what are you working on right now? Right now, we're working on the Three Million Club. So we're working on generating traction with uh, buyers. Uh, getting as much people to our uh, website to buy products, to buy life-saving products. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, let's say, uh, 50% of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. This is working in parallel to the system developing and the tracking um, tracking device that we're developing. Mm -hmm. This is happening ongoingly. And then the second thing is to get more products on uh, on board in the shop. So, And actually, we are working on India quite mm -hmm. uh, heavily. Mm -hmm. We want to get more products in India, um, more life-saving products manufactured in India mm -hmm. and uh, sell them uh, and distribute them within India in areas of need. Mm -hmm. and when do you think that will happen? Uh, very soon. So mm -hmm. we have one product that is actually uh, to do with malnutrition. India is the, sec is the has the largest population of malnourished, severely malnourished children in the world. Uh, out of the 3.1 uh, children that die every year, 1.5 are only in India. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one of the products that we want to launch there. There's a local manufacturer that is developing a therapeutic food that has developed already a therapeutic food mm -hmm. and we're looking at working with them. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking for more innovative uh, products in India and we're hoping to, to integrate them soon, to find them and integrate them soon. So if anybody has ideas, please get in touch <laughs> with me. Um, um, it's all very personal. You get in touch directly with me or with our operations officer and, uh, and we move on from then, add these to the shop. How big's the team? Very small, mm -hmm. two. Two people, okay. <laughs> two people. Uh, you know, it's a little bit like a WhatsApp model. Mm -hmm. Very small team, very large operation. A lot of the services, most of the services are outsourcing. Of course, we do have a regular communication, a regular communication officer and uh, IT uh, support and CFO services. But again, these are outsourced. Mm -hmm. So on the actual uh, payroll, there are two of us and then the rest is outsourced. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and where does the name come from? The name is uh, is going to change soon. Okay. If you have good ideas over the new name, please <laughs> okay. share them with us. We just couldn't come up with anything better. Um, and we decided that uh, rebranding is less of a... Um, of a of a priority at this moment. Mm -hmm. So we will uh, probably do rebranding re within the next uh, six months or so. Uh, the name came from our angels. They're not uh, marketing people. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so you've been doing this for the last 17 years then? Right. Okay. Yes. I mean, what's been the most surprising thing about the journey so far? Oh, wow. Um, the most surprising thing is the thing that got hold of me in the humanitarian sphere, you know, is when you have, uh, I've been doing mainly relief aid, emergency relief aid, so it's post-natural disasters like tsunami, earthquakes, um, uh, heat waves, uh, epidemics, etc., and post-conflict. Um, and entering these types of zones, the thing that most, most captured me is the humanity, not of the aid workers, uh, but of the people. When you have absolutely nothing mm -hmm. is when you see everything, you know, is uh, it's when you see the most humane um, uh, magic in, in, in our world. And it's, uh, it was incredible, you know, entering these places and people that have nothing, that everything was stripped off them either uh, by force of nature or by uh, human cruelty, um, offer you the last cup of tea mm -hmm. or 
a place to sit and sleep with them in whatever makeshift uh, accommodation they have. That's the thing that captured me. Mm -hmm. And the capacity, the sheer capacity, our sheer capacity to bounce back after the worst mm -hmm. is, uh, is amazing, amazing, amazing to see. Uh, we often forget this uh, capacity when we are in our life to life, life in the Northern Hemisphere and in the uh, people that are uh, privileged to have uh, everything, um, how quick we can bounce up back mm -hmm. um, and deal with the hardship. And that capacity is what uh, I'm really after on empowering and building because the local capacity is greater than any mm -hmm. uh, international capacity. We just need to trust it and empower it and not, um, and not defeat it by creating dependency on foreign uh, systems. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, I mean, what do people like UNICEF and United Nations think of what you're doing? Um, a lot of friends and colleagues of mine think it's great because it fills a gap. It's not instead, it's not replacing what, uh, what international agencies are doing. They're doing very, very important works that saves uh, millions, hundreds of millions of lives all the time. And they're also doing development work. Uh, but what they don't do and what is difficult for them is to do rapid change in their systems. And it's difficult for them to aid the local individual uh, needs, very, very micro needs on the ground and very micro needs of individual donors just wanting to help and donate online. People that just want to do good now. I want to buy a life-saving product now. This is very difficult for huge organizations uh, to do at the moment. So they think that this system really uh, fills a much necessary, much needed gap uh, that exists today in supporting local economy and uh, providing full transparent tracking. Mm -hmm. And if the once the system, uh, you know, the public engages and the system is up and running, there will be no question for them over the need for them to use similar systems. Excellent. Uh, last few questions then. Uh, say if someone wants to do like a tech for good startup uh, similar yeah. to yours, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, the depends where they come from. So if they come, your question is if they come from the technological background, right? Mm -hmm. um, then I would say the main thing is to collaborate with, with somebody that knows the actual sphere that you're going to work with. So a humanitarian like myself or like uh, many others. Uh, the reason for that is that we have great, or we all have great ideas, but if you don't know the actual problem, that you are solving um, and the actual questions, you need to have a good question, a good problem, not a big uh, impossible problem to, to answer. You need to have to understand the domain that your system is going to be used in and what need it's going to answer. That's my main uh, issue because a lot of things that seem for us obvious uh, in the humanitarian sphere are not at all obvious. Uh, talking from power, capacity, electricity, uh, until skill and know-how and uh, funds if your product is uh, more expensive than the, the weekly earnings of an uh, individual, it might be an issue, and many more questions. So the first thing is to partner with somebody that, uh, that understands the sphere and understands the problem in the, in the domain that you want to, to aid. Mm -hmm. Okay, and plans for the future, say, what, what would you say the goals are in the next 12 months? In the next 12 months, there really is to, uh, to get more products on board in the shop and to get more buyers to, to know of the system and to buy and donate and, uh, and buy, buy actual products and get them sent. Uh, and this is in parallel to developing the technology. That's our main goal. Uh, develop the technology, add more products and get people to buy the products and send them to where is needed. So create a lot of traction on the, within the shop. Mm -hmm. After that, 24 months goals down the road is to get the system um, and give the same tracking system to other agencies that have similar uh, online shops so that they can provide the same tracking, the same local um, empowerment as, uh, as we do and to, sh to see that it actually works and creates engagement and sustainable solutions. Excellent. So last question then. Uh, if people want more information on you and 3 Billion Club, uh, what must they do? Just drop us an email. We'll reply for sure. Uh, promise. So it's um, info at 3millionclub.com. Um, and just send an email. Tell us that you heard the podcast. And uh, we will move forward from there. 
we are happy to add more products. Um, add, if you are a distributor and in need of a particular product, then let us know of that as well. If you have an idea for an innovation, perhaps we can connect you with a manufacturer of that innovation. Yeah. So really the sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Uh, thanks for coming <laughs> on the show today, Sham so much appreciate Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Neil. Have a good week. Thank you. Now. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks to Sam Mutal for coming on the show today. And if you want more information, go to 3millionclub.com. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and supporting the podcast. And I'll see you back next week. Goodbye.